So as you can see, we have a 24 page document open here inside of InDesign. All of those 24 pages are shown in the pages panel on the right hand side of the screen, which I've tried to make as big as possible so that you can see everything that's going on in the file. What we're actually looking at in the layout in the image window are pages two to three. Now this is a contents page design. So part of its purpose is of course to reference other page numbers in the document, but there isn't actually anything on either of these pages to tell us that we're actually on pages two or three. Yes, InDesign will reference in the pages panel that we are working on pages two to three in here, but in terms of printing out or exporting out your document, it won't put the page numbering on, you have to create a text frame and then put that page numbering system into the document yourself. As with all things, there are good and there are bad ways of doing that. Ideally, you would put your page numbers on a master page. So here in the pages panel, in the upper section are where all the masters are. Effectively, if you've never worked with a master page, it is an all singing, all dancing header and footer. It can include page numbering if you wish to. It can include things like a logo. So if you've got common elements that appear on many or most of your document pages, the master page is the place to do it. And um, you'll notice here that this is referenced as a master as every new InDesign document has an A master. Take a look at the thumbnails for the page numbers lower down. Page one has a capital A in, as does every other page thumbnail in the document. So whatever we put onto the A master page will automatically be added to the number pages of our document. We can remove those afterwards and I will show you that, but how do we get a numbering system added to our document that will print out or appear in export and that will update automatically for us? Well, I'm gonna hover my cursor over the A master page name in there and double left click. It takes me to the master page, which is really has no printable content on it. It just has the grid structure in here. I'll pick up my zoom tool from the tools panel and then I'll zoom into that lower left corner of the left hand side page in here and then spacebar to pan and I'll then go to my type tool and I'll create a, a reasonable size text frame in there to put my numbering in. Now you wouldn't of course type in one in here uh, or any number because then every left side of page would be referenced with that specific static number. We want InDesign to create a dynamic number that changes uh, to reflect the page that it's on. So here with my type tool flashing away, I'll go to the type menu at the top of the screen, go down the list to insert special character, then go across to markers and choose current page number. Now that has a keyboard shortcut that is uh, in there, but it's almost long as the long convoluted route into that menu. So I'll left click on current page numbers and it inserts an A. Why an A? Well, because we're on the A master page. So this is just a placeholder and this is the best placeholder reference that it can give us. From here now, we've got a character in there. I can double left click on it and you can format like any other type character that you wish to. So with that selected, I'll go to the top in here and I'll pick something that fits with this document style. So I'll choose a, an Adobe font in here, uh, alternative Gothic number one D. I'll leave the font uh, size set to 12 points here. Let's make it nice and clear. What I will do, however, is I'm going to change the alignment here to away from spine. So it always pushes the text to the outside edge of the text frame away from the center spine of the document. So I'll left click on that. We won't see any change because it was already left aligned. I'll hit the escape key on the keyboard and then from my alignment options up at the top, make sure this set to align to margins and then change the alignment to left aligned in there like so. I'll just with the cursor keys and keyboard, just nudge that down a little bit like so. And then with that done, I can go to view and then choose fit spreading window, go to edit and choose copy and then choose edit and paste in place. Now that pasted version will appear immediately over the original one. If I click and drag, I can pull that across the right hand side, hold down the shift key to make sure it doesn't move up and down, let go of the mouse, then let go of the shift key. Notice that number now, if you could spot it, um, has been pushed to the outside of that text frame in there to the right hand side this time. And again, to make sure it's aligned accordingly with the margins, I'll this time choose align right edges, and then it will align to the right hand side margin on the right hand side page. So I now have references now in this A master for every left and right side of page of the document. If I then go to say, for example, back to pages two to three and double left click, you'll now notice that they have changed from a capital A to a two and a three. If I go to say pages 12 to 13, they now change to pages 12 to 13. If the page order shuffles, InDesign will do that work for you, will automatically update the numbering for you. So that is the simplest way and the most efficient way of being able to get page numbering into your document inside of InDesign. There are, however, some things to be aware of. So if I go to say page 24, there is no page number on there. 
why is that not the case? And well, I just told you that every one of these number pages has a capital A in here. It's using the A master page. So why is it not visible? Well, the way that master pages work and the layers panel in particular is that take a look at the layers panel. All the content for this document is stored in something called layer one. If you apply things and put them onto a master page like our numbers, and that lives in the same layer as all the content that's on your number pages, like the red box and the photographs here. Well, InDesign will put the stuff that's on the document pages, the number pages in front of anything that's on a master page. And in fact, if I just go to the little lock here and unlock that red box, if I just drag it up a little bit here, you'll see that actually the page number is there. But because it's in the same layer, uh, the page numbering there as the red box and the rest of the content layout, that content being on a master page is always behind whatever you put on a document number page. So the simple answer to this is, I'll just put that red box back where it was and then go to the layers panel. I'll um, choose to click down here to add a new layer. That new layer appears at the top in there with a generic name of layer two. I'll hover my cursor just to the right hand side of that layer name, double click, and then I'll call this master page items. And I'll click OK. Now, nothing will change because I need to go back to the A master and double left click. And so from here, the only two things on this layout in here, as we now know, is um, the two numbered pages references. If I go to edit and then choose select all, it selects those two text frames. Notice that InDesign will tell me that they live in currently layer one. I wish to move them to the layer higher up. I'll hover my cursor over the selection indicator and click and drag and move that up to the empty space just above. And that will turn into a red square and it will highlight the master page items. And now notice that the text frames are color coded red because they live in the red master page items layer. So that's all good. What I would suggest is that to prevent you from adding any content into the master page items, lock it afterwards by clicking in the empty space between the eyeball and the color in there. Now, I can't click on those in there um, because they're locked away. It will also prevent you from going to, say, page 24 and accidentally putting something into the master page and putting it in front of our numbers. So I'll left click back in layer one in there where I should be putting the rest of my content. And you'll notice now if I pick up my zoom tool, the page number does appear, which is great. So as a simple way of overcoming the fact that content on your numbered document pages will always be put in front of anything that's on a master page should they share the same layer in the layer stack. And the reason why now that the page numbers are visible is because they were made in a layer higher up and therefore anything that's in this layers panel here is referred to as a stack. If it's an item that's in a layer higher up, it appears in front of anything that's lower down in the stack. And so the red box and all photographs are in a layer lower down called layer one. My master page items are in a layer higher up and therefore will now be always in front of the red box. So that resolves that issue. So we have this on page 24 and all the page numbering in our document. What if, however, you decide that, well, actually you don't want a page number somewhere in your file. Well, simple answer to that is that if in the case here, if I go to say my layers panel, I can unlock my master page items and then switch to my selection tool at the top of the tools panel. If you wish to, now you can't select anything that is on a master page by default because it's locked away for good reason, because if you could move things around that were on a master page, you would lose the consistency. Things could be repositioned somewhere and we don't want that. So all I could do if I click in that area is to click on the red box actually. And if I click and drag, that's what I've got selected. So if I just undo that by pressing command and Z, if you want to release something from a master page, then you can do that. You've got to make sure that you unlock the layer called master page items in the layers panel to do that. If you then hover your cursor over the area where there's a master page item on the Mac, hold down command and shift, that will be control and shift on a PC. And then with those two keys held down, left click, and it releases that item from the master page. So it becomes selectable on this page only. So just to stress, it won't affect pages one to 23 in this document, only the one that I've clicked on inside of here. With that now selectable, I can simply delete it and remove it from this document page. And then I will make sure I go back to layers panel and lock that master page items in there and click back in layer one. If I say, for example, now wanted to go back to page one, that's kind of like a cover. And although it's hard to spot, there is a page number down here, page one. I don't want the page number on the cover in there. So again, how could I remove that? Well, I could use the same technique, 
But we also have inside the pages panel something called a non master page. Now, you can't go to a non master page, it just removes any kind of master page design from that particular page that you apply it to. So you could hover your cursor over the non master page name, click and hold down the left mouse button, keep it held down, and it's like dragging the word non onto the page thumbnail that you wish to apply it to. When I drag and drop it onto page one, Notice now that the page number has disappeared from the bottom right hand side there. And it also now does not have a capital A in the thumbnail because it's got the non master page applied. So that's pretty handy. Two different techniques for doing that. If I then go back to pages two to three and then go to view and choose fit spreading window. So what if I'm now looking at this document and thinking, well, do you know what? I don't really want the cover to be referenced as page number one. I'd, I'd like really the contents page in here to start on page one and then page two, you can change that. There's a couple of things to be aware of. Now, if we want to define any page of our document to become a new page one, there's a couple of things you have to do. Uh, the reason why I, I say this is because if I just go straight to page two to three, and if I right click on that thumbnail and choose to go to numbering and section options, it will allow me in here to say, okay, create a new section but I actually want to start the page numbering on page one. Now there's a thing to know about this. InDesign's page numbering odd side pages are always a right side of page. So take a look at the pages panel when I click OK. I will click OK to the message and I'll talk about that later, but take a look at what happens. What was a left side of page in here has now been changed into a page number one, but then it's forced it to be a right side of page. If I go to pages two to three now, it's basically shuffled all the pages on one and it's completely ruined the layout of all the subsequent pages of the document. So you have to avoid doing that. And the way you do it is if I go to edit and choose undo new section, put it back to how it was with pages two to three joined together. You have to go to the menu at the top and you have to choose to turn off, allow document pages to shuffle. That will resolve the issue. And then from here, I can right click and choose numbering and section options. Inside of InDesign, then the very first page of a document is always page one. That's always a right side of page. But if I want to change it now so that the current page two is actually referenced as page one, are you following along? Then what you do is you add a new section and then you can tell it then to start page numbering at page one. So we're telling it on from page two in here now, create a new section and it will actually start being numbered as page one in the document. When I click OK, InDesign tends to get upset with this. And the reason is that InDesign is saying, well, hang on a minute, there's already a page one in this document. That's very confusing. Um, it needs to have an explicit reference for each of the pages. For now, that is not a problem. I will click OK. And then you'll notice that in here we do have now technically two page ones in the document. So now notice down at the bottom left hand side, it now starts page one. And then we've got page two on the right hand side. So that works. That's good. Um, if you want to just resolve this confusion, you can click on page one, the original page one of the document, the very first page, right click on it, and you can choose again, numbering and section options. Instead of having InDesign reference this as a style of one, two, three, four, for example, like the rest of the page in the document, you can click on the drop down menu and you can choose a, a Roman numeral, for example, which is quite common in something like the start of a book. So the forwarding of a book, they are often uh, characterized as having Roman numerals. When I click on that now, set the staff to be Roman numerals. I'll then click OK. Notice now then that that is set to an I for page one in there. So we have a, a digit for page one and we have an I in there. So it will be less confusing for InDesign. Uh, and from here, that's then how we get our page numbering to start anywhere in our document. And then what about if we wanted to say, for example, have numbering on just one page, so the right hand side page, and you wanted to have a page range so that on the right hand side of page, it would say the previous page is page one and this page is page two. Well, you can do that as well. But again, there are some caveats to it. So if I go back to my master page, double click on there, then what I can do is I can go down to the bottom right hand side the right hand side page, zoom in there. If I switch to my selection tool, double left click on the text frame in there. Do remember, of course, see the error? It's locked. Double click on the text frame to go into type editing mode. I'm going to delete that character and then I'm going to choose type, insert special character, markers, and then choose previous page number. 
So that will put in there. And again, it has an A in there. And then I will probably have a, a kind of a connector or something in there. So I'll probably have a hyphen. So I'll go to type insert special character hyphens and dashes, and I'll choose an M dash in there. So that's a dash that's the equivalent to a capital M in the font that I'm using. And then I can go back to type insert special character markers and then choose current page number and then I'll hit the escape key so you do have to test this out now I will show you that this at first will not work and there's a reason why but it is not obvious so I'll go back to my now new page number two and double left click okay so it now is telling me that the previous page is page two and the current page is also page two why is that well you'll have to go back to the master page InDesign needs some kind of physical reference for what the previous page is. It needs a physical link. So I will repurpose the original text frame that's on the left side of the page in here. So I'm going to click on that. I'll pick up the zoom tool and I'll, I'll zoom in nice and close to that like so. And then what I can do is I can switch to my selection tool. I'm going to create a threaded text frame. So we need to have one text frame on the left side of the page. We need to thread another text frame over to the right hand side page. That's how it works. It just doesn't tell you that's how it works. I'm going to hover my cursor over the threading icon down here, right in the middle right hand side, click inside of there, go into threading mode, and then I can use the scroll bar actually and scroll all the way across over here to where my reference is. I'm going to click and drag and draw a new text frame and it has to overlap there. That's the key thing. So um, that new text frame threaded from the previous page has to overlap and interact with the text frame that contains the previous page reference and the current page reference. And then I can take the scroll bar all the way back and then I can put my cursor inside that text frame, double click, and I can actually just remove that character in there and hit the escape key on the keyboard. You don't need to have any characters in there. We just need to have a link in there. And naturally, I have a feature turned on in here, which is to show threads. Now it's usually turned on. So you won't see this connecting line in here. Normally you'd have to go to the view menu, go down to extras and you have to turn on an option that would be called show text threads. As I say, that's usually turned off. Why? I don't know, because it's a really handy feature, but that will show you a link between the first text frame and little play button. And then if I scroll all the way across in there, just double check. Yes, that new text frame that's been threaded over here does interact with the one on the right hand side. Now in design should be fine with this. Fingers crossed, folks. Go to page two and there we go. It will tell us that the previous page is page one. The current page is page two in there. So that is how you can create that in the master page. And again, if I go to, say, for example, pages three to four, it does the same thing. So it still updates automatically, but it needs that physical link inside of there. So there we have it, folks. That's how you can create automated page numbering inside of InDesign based on a master page. We've overcome some of the issues with having your numbering disappear for some strange reason, which relates to layers and creating a dedicated layer for all your master page content right at the top of the layers panel. And then how we can uh, remove numbering by applying a non master page to a numbered document page in question. Or you can hold down the command and shift and left click or control shift and left click on a master page number and release it. And then you can delete it if you wish to. And then how we can set page numbering to start uh, at page one anywhere inside of your document. And then also how we can create a range of pages with a current page and a previous page reference, as we can see on screen here. Thanks for following along, folks. Uh, if you found the video helpful, do please give it a like. So it gives me good feedback and I know that you're getting value out of these videos. Don't forget, you can go click on the subscribe button to see more content in the future. And if you don't want to miss a single Adobe Techniques video, then you can click on the alerts button and every time a new video is posted, you'll be notified. Until next time, farewell, friends.